In this tutorial, we're going to introduce you to rotary machining. This is where we take one of the linear axis and wrap it around a cylinder. This is only applicable if you have a rotary axis on your machine and a compatible post processor. Okay, to start this tutorial off, we're going to create a brand new file. And our job setup is going to be a rotary job setup. And the length of our cylinder we're going to be using is 12 inches. And that diameter is going to be 3 inches. We're going to make sure, of course, we have inches selected. Uh, our Z0 position is going to be off the cylinder axis. Now, typically, you would choose this unless you were sure that your cylinder was perfectly round. And in our case, we're not quite sure. So we're going to go ahead and use our cylinder axis. And then we are also going to set our XY datum to the bottom left hand corner. And on our machine, we are going to wrap our Y around the circumference of our material. You'll need to check your machine to figure out which axis you're wrapping. Uh, normally you can tell just by looking at it or you may need to contact the maker of your CNC machine. We're not going to flip our design. We're going to use a standard resolution. We don't need anything more than that because we're not using any 3D content. We're just going to be cutting text and our appearance will be Canadian maple and we're going to click OK. Now we get the chance to look at our job setup. So down here in the corner, the bottom left corner, we have our job dimensions. The width is 12 inches like we set up. The height is actually our diameter unwrapped flat and that equals 9.4248 inches. And the software figures that out for you. Now, if we go to our 3D view, right now you're gonna see nothing in the 3D view, but if we go ahead and take a look at our cylinder block, you'll see that we actually have a cylinder that we're using. Now, because we're using a rotary job, we also have this new icon that's gonna show up right here. It's toggle automatic wrapping in the 3D view. So right now, our software has taken our Y axis and wrapped it around our cylinder. And if we turn that off, you're gonna see the typical job space that we have, which is unwrapped and flat. And that's the way that our software calculates our tooling is it's gonna actually gonna calculate our tool pass on a flat surface and then wrap that around our Y axis based on our job setup. So if we turn that back on, you're gonna see what that looks like. Now let's flip over to our 2D view and let's just add some very simple text into our job. So I'm going to press F on my keyboard to make sure I focus in on the full job space. We're going to go over and choose to draw text within a vector box. Now we don't have a vector box to select. So what you'll see is that our software actually chooses the whole job space. And you can see that because there's a checked box all around the outside of this. And we're going to type in this wrapped Make it all caps. Rotary text. Perfect. And we are going to use a two type font. We're going to choose out of our list of fonts. We can, once we drop, use the drop down, we can press A on our keyboard to go up to Arial. So we'll choose that. We'll make it bold. We're going to make sure we center our text. And everything else looks great. So we're just going to go ahead and close. So now we have our text all laid out. We're going to do some very basic tool pathing. So let's flip over to our toolpath tab by clicking switch to the toolpaths command. And we're going to first look at our material setup. And this is important because we want to make sure that our material setup in our software is the same as what it's going to be on our machine. So we're going to look at our diameter of our material, which is three inches. Our XY datum is the bottom left. Now we set this all up before when we are setting up our job and same with our Z0 is going to be set to the center of our cylinder. Because we're not using any 3D content, then we're just going to machine off the surface of our material. You're going to want to make sure that your rapid Z gaps above your material and your home start position are safe and appropriate for your machine. I'm going to go ahead and use the default setter in here and we're going to click OK. So for our first demonstration, we're going to use a pocket toolpath. So we're going to select this text. We're going to go over and choose the pocket strategy, toolpath strategy. And we're going to have a start depth of zero. We're going to cut down 0.1 of an inch. We're going to select a new end mill and we're going to choose a 1 8 inch end mill. We're going to check to make sure that all of our settings are safe and appropriate for our machine. And we can select that. 
we're not going to use a large area clearance tool. We're not going to worry about any of the, the clearance options here. We're just going to use a basic raster. That'll be fine. Now, actually, let's use a, an offset strategy. That might work a little bit better in this situation. No pocket allowance. We'll just go ahead and calculate that. And you'll see that now in our 3D view, we have our toolpath all calculated. And for a second, you may have noticed that the software actually calculated that toolpath flat and then wrapped it around when it was all done calculating it, just like we explained earlier. So if I preview that visible toolpath, you'll see that it did it again. It flattened out our job, previewed our tooling, and then wrapped that preview back around the cylinder. And here we have what it looks like. Let's hide our material block. And let's just go ahead and change our material to be Canadian maple. It's a little easier to see. And we can take a look by holding down our left mouse button. We can rotate around our job and have a look at our actual text that's been machined on there. And that looks pretty good. Now, also, we have some nice new view options up here that we can use. We can go ahead and select this one here and it'll rotate our cylinder in 30 degree increments, either clockwise or counterclockwise. We can look straight down our cylinder, we can look straight at the surface, or we can look at the other side. So those are all quite handy to know. Now, let's just go ahead and reset our preview. Let's delete our toolpath by right clicking on it and selecting delete this. Let's close this down and let's create a brand new toolpath. But instead of using a pocket toolpath strategy, we're going to go ahead and use our V carving. So let's select that. We're going to use a start depth of zero, no flat depth. We're going to go ahead and use the, the default V bit that happens to show up in here. If it's not the V bit that you have, you can click select and choose a new V bit from your tool database. We're not going to use any clearance tools. And we're going to go ahead and calculate that. Now let's have a look at what that looks like on our job. And again, it unwrapped it, calculated it, previewed it for us. And here we have what we would see on our finished job. And that looks pretty good. So as you can see, to create up some basic rotary text is fairly easy to do. You just need to keep a couple things in mind while you're doing it. And uh, once you have it done, you can go ahead and save off your toolpath, making sure that you choose a post processor that's appropriate for your CNC machine. You need to make sure that it actually supports wrapped geometry. Um, that's important because that will take our Y coordinates and wrap them around your rotary axis the pr appropriate way that you need. In our case, it was, it was Y. It's going to be wrapped. You might need to wrap your X. And you can tell that by if you drop down your post processors. And if we press M on our keyboard, that'll take us directly to our M. And we'll, for instance, we'll look at the Mach 3 post processors. You can see that there's a Mach 3 or 2 slash 3 wrap X to A or wrap Y to A. So in our case, we're going to wrap our Y to A or our X to A. And then we can go ahead and save that off in our folder or somewhere we can find it so we can load it into our CNC machine. Now let's close this down. And to finish this off, let's just go to File. And we're going to save off our job into the tutorial folder so you can have this to look at if you'd like to. And we'll save that off. And I hope you found that video helpful. And um, we can't wait to see what you do with wrap text on your next rotary project.